all Tesla news for the final week of February. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Tesla finished the week at 675 a share, down 11%. Compare that with the Dow Jones Industrial Average, down 1%. The NASDAQ down 3.8% and the S&P 500 down almost 1%. A pretty brutal week overall, but 11% down for Tesla is worse than any of the indices by quite a bit. If you want to see how much the Tesla share price has dropped since the previous all-time high, the most recent one, you can look at this chart, which bottoms out at negative 65. And here we are back in 2011. It dropped 35, 35, 30-ish, um, 35 again in 2014, 2016, big, big drop. And, you know, um, here we are, Tesla Model 3 ramp up, or it says rump up which I think is also correct. Big drop there. And then uh, with the Rones, yeah, big drop. These are not terribly big drops from the all-time high. This is not something to freak out about. The fundamentals of the company have not changed. It's just uh, the market. It's just market perception. If I could read into the market, if I could predict the future, I'd be more of a gambler and less of an investor. I'm not a gambler, I'm an investor. South Korean Sovereign Fund continues to increase stake in Tesla shares. Yes, the South Korean Sovereign Wealth Fund recently made big changes to some of its largest investments, including a Tesla. We can, uh, look at that, it acquired 150,000 new shares. Yeah, not bad. Bringing the total to 409,000. Not bad. At Peter Schiff tweeted, two weeks after at Elon Musk announced that he spent 1.5 ba -ba, ba -ba -ba billion of shareholder money buying Bitcoin, hashtag Tesla stock entered a bear market, plunging 20% from its all-time high. <sighs> to which Elon appropriately responded, eggplant. And if you like sassy Elon, uh, how about this one? Washington Post, Tesla did not respond to repeated requests for comments. In response to emails seeking comment, Musk replied only, give my regards to your puppet masters. <laughs> by the way, the Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos, one of the two richest men alive, with the other being Elon, depending on which day of the week you check, and uh, the guy who owns Blue Origin, the uh, distant runner-up behind SpaceX. So, no hard feelings there, I am sure. The YouTube algo is really destroying me lately, so if you could give this video a thumbs up, it would go a long way towards helping others who share your same interests find this channel. And if you haven't subscribed, oh pretty please do that. It's the only way you gots to help me out. Ars Technica is reporting that road trippers are three times more likely to buy an EV than homebodies. So this was the big thing. Range anxiety. Surely these will never work for people who do regular road trips, except they will and they do. Because, you know, it's way cheaper than gas and it's really not that inconvenient. And, you know, people are waking up to that fact. The Insurance Journal is reporting that Tesla to offer auto insurance program in Texas. I mean, I don't really have much to say about that. It's just kind of, you know, a new thing. It's a new revenue stream. It's, it's great. It's great. Tesla Roddy has announced that Tesla Model 3 has captured the IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus award for the third straight year. And why wouldn't they? There's no engine in the front to get pushed back through the firewall. The center of gravity is all below the floors. And with all the active safety devices, cameras, computers, etc., it's a safe car. Heading to Twitter, Tesla owners of Silicon Valley said Cybertruck will become number one selling truck in America at Elon Musk. Now, <laughs> I maybe. Elon responded, final design is looking okay was just in the studio. Can you share any photos? Uh, no. No, Elon went quiet at that point, but you know, hey, great. 
Elon Musk says Tesla is shifting more electric cars to lithium iron phosphate batteries over nickel supply concerns. Well, the thing is, the traditional lithium ions are really good at high density, long range applications, and the lithium iron phosphate is more dependable, has a longer lifespan, but not as much energy density. So for an SR Plus, this is a pretty good alternative. So this could also help minimize uh, battery constraints in the supply chain. Another tweet replying to at Elon Musk and at Clean Technica, FSD beta is amazing. No point to ever fear it. it. Any idea when the next update is coming? We're upgrading, this is Elon, we're upgrading all neural nets to surround video using subnets on focal areas versus equal compute on all uncropped pixels and many other things. So more time needed to rewrite and validate software, maybe sometime next week. This is evolving into solving a big part of physical world AI. Those are all words. I'm, I don't know what they mean, but they're... Uh, they sound, they sound official. Whole Mars Catalog tweeted, the FSD thing is going to be big. It's incredible, even at this early stage, to which Elon replied, most people have no idea, even though there are so many FSD progress videos posted. Sandy Monroe from Monroe and Associates understood right away. There will be a gap before the next release, but then it will be a step change better. Tesla is solving a major real world AI problem. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Again, mostly words, but I'm confident they mean something in the order in which they are presented. At Memes of Mars said, Any news on Fremont shutdown? To which Elon replied, Fremont shut down for two days due to parts shortages and restarted yesterday. Uh, Reuters went a bit deeper into depth, explaining that the part shortages were likely chips or other things. But um, yeah, the plant apparently is already back up to speed. The company could not be reached for comment because they don't have a PR department. So that's kind of interesting. Samsung, which supplies chips that control self-driving capabilities, last week had to suspend its factory in Austin as a winter storm caused power outages. I mean, you guys know that. You guys know that. A big thanks to my Patreons who enjoy early access, bonus content, and help keep the channel running. Tesla wins contract for Victorian Big Battery, 350 megawatts in size. This is going to be another mega pack project similar to the one in Hornsdale in southern Australia, and it will, you know, uh, help level the grid, save consumers' prices, diminish the need for peaker plants, and make everybody a bunch of money. Tasmanian is reporting that Tesla repair and insurance costs in China are half those of other luxury brands like Mercedes, BMW, and Audi. I mean, that is going to drive units right there. Because as soon as you have your first out-of-warranty repair cost and somebody realizes, oh my gosh, this is outrageously expensive, they're going to drop the BMW and, you know, look for something else, talk to their friends. It's gonna be big. It's gonna be big. Tasmanian is also reporting that Tesla has been recognized by Gold Man Sachs for its array of battery leading technologies. And I don't put much weight into the words of these analysts since they so frequently don't know what they're talking about. And even when they're right, it's a coin toss. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. These guys get paid high six figures to do analysis, and they're so uh, frequently wrong. LG has begun to build a Tesla 4680 battery pilot production line, and the operation time may be ahead of Panasonic. LG Energy Solutions has begun their pilot line. Yeah, and it's... <laughs> the more of these batteries we can get, the better. Taiwan's Foxconn to build cars for EV company Fisker. Yeah, so Fisker is trying to build cars. And I mean, if this is it, it's it's cute. It's really cute. Uh, this is the company that builds up iPhones for Apple. And there's been a lot of mm, not so hot press around this, but I think Foxconn is a absolute manufacturing powerhouse for tech. And 
This is a good sign for Fisker and anyone who wishes to someday own one. The United States Postal Service has unveiled their next generation mail truck with electric drivetrain option. This beautiful beast is more of a package hauler than a first class letter hauler, and that's because the future is all packages. We get our bills through the internet now, but I can't get my entire new parcel that way, so here you go. And this platform should be able to have a internal combustion engine or an electric motor and work roughly as well either way. And fun fact, fun fact, fun fact, I actually made a video a few years back about how the USPS should absolutely, you know, go electric. I'll link it. I'll link it. Nobody watched it back then, but it wasn't on this channel, and <sighs> it should have been. I should have just started doing Tesla then, but here we are. Here we are. It's going to be... It's going to be a smart move. All the start and stop, all the short hauls, it's perfect for mail carrier delivery service. New York City is testing electric garbage trucks. What a great idea. I mean, right? Think of all the weight they're hauling, all the short stops, and the regen braking opportunity. It's going to be fantastic. They're testing the new LR Electric from Mac. Mac? Oh, wow. Well, there you go. Big brands are getting into it, and I'm sure Nikola is right around the corner. Hyundai Motors to replace battery systems in $900 million electric car recall. Yes, their cars are catching on fire. And that's what you need when you've only sold not very many cars is a billion dollar recall. So to all the people saying legacy guys are just around the corner, competition is coming. Guess what? I'm not so convinced. So I don't know. Good job, I guess. So what did I miss or misunderstand? Let me know in the comments and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop.